All right, guys, I'm gonna try to run through this as fast as possible because there's a lot of stuff I wanna cover. So jumping into what is new for the GoPro Hero 3 Plus. Aside from the Super View in 1080 and 720 with the same frame rates, you get 50 and 60 frames per second and 960, and also a medium view angle in 2.7K as well as 12.5 and 15 frames per second in 4K. So there are a few different things, not a whole lot. Uh, 1080 and 720 uh, both get the super view wide angle. Now, while the Hero 3 Plus housing is 20% smaller, both of them are cross compatible. So you can take the Hero 3, put it in a Hero 3 Plus body and vice versa. Now that might not seem like a big deal to a lot of you guys, but for you skydivers out there, people who are worried about snag hazards, the streamlined design of the Hero 3 Plus is actually really nice. It's just a pain in the butt trying to get the top off compared to the, uh, the release on the previous model. Keep in mind, I'm not filming in ProTune. This is the default record modes. If you want to color correct or something like that, I recommend using the ProTune mode, but for the sake of this demonstration, this is all default. So jumping into the first shot here on the roof, I have uh, the GoPro Hero 3 Plus on the left side and the Hero 3 on the right. If you look at the trees, you can see a little bit more detail in the branches and the leaves. This is such a wide angle, it's hard to pick out a lot of the differences, but looking at the power lines there too, you can see a little bit of the aliasing um, on, the, on the power lines. Moving on to the next setup of the grass on the ground with this lady and the dogs walking by. Pausing it here, you look at the dogs, you can see a little bit more attention to detail in their coats. The grass actually looks a little more flat on the left side. It's a little more saturated on the right. The definition in the trees, the branches, definitely looks a little more sharp or crisp. As she walks by there, I'll, I'll pause it or you can look at her face. The definition there on the left side is a little more prominent and a little more fuzzy and soft on the right. The big difference if you look to the left side of the frame is looking at the Mustang and the trees, you can see on the Hero 3, it's a little more fuzzy, it's a little soft compared to the Hero 3 Plus where it's a little more crisp and sharp on the left side. So jumping up into this next setup, I have a slow motion scenario. It's 720p at 120 frames per second in a 24p timeline. So keep that in mind. A lot of people uh, don't realize that you need to conform or drop uh, 120 frame per second footage into uh, 24p to be able to get the slow motion effect. Pausing it here, looking at the image, really don't see a whole lot of difference in the 720p resolution. The 1080, it's a little more noticeable. Uh, slow motion and everything is pretty much exactly the same in the Hero 3 and the Hero 3 Plus. Into the next setup, I have a 1080p resolution at 24 frames per second underwater. If you look at the Hero 3 Plus, look at the imperfections on the pool, on the wall underneath the water level there. It's a little more crisp on the Hero 3 Plus versus a little more soft on the Hero 3. Pausing it as she cannonballs in there, if you look at her hair and the bubbles coming off of it, again, a little more crisp on the right side. It's a little more blurry a little more soft focus. Same underwater setup, 720p at 120 frames per second in a 24p timeline. The image is about the same on the left. It's a little more crisp on the Hero 3 Plus than the Hero 3. Pausing it as my feet go into the water, you see a little more definition on the bubbles on the left side than you do on the right. 720p is not as noticeable as the 1080. This last setup that I have here of the Ferrari coming out of the McDonald's parking lot is 1080 at 24 frames per second in a low light condition. Now, pausing it as the car starts to get into the street there, if you look at the playground to the top left there on the GoPro Hero 3, it's a little more soft, less definition as in the other clips, a little more detail in the Hero 3 Plus. Looking at the lights across the street on the sign, it's a little more sharp. You can make out more of the, the sign's definition and the letters than you can on the Hero 3 below it. Definition on the wheels uh, on the Hero 3 Plus is a little bit more prominent than uh, on the, uh, the Hero 3. All right, the new Super View versus the Ultra View. I tested it in the exact same housing so that you can see the angles, uh, how close it is there to the canvas. With the Hero 3 Plus and the Super View, you get a little bit more of a wide angle effect. The colors here do look a little bit better. Uh, it's less saturated. The whites are a little more crisp on the Hero 3 Plus than on the Hero 3. 
I personally couldn't tell much of a difference between the two as far as audio outside of a housing, but within a skeleton housing, the Hero 3 was better than the 3 Plus. That's probably largely in part because it looks like the mic holes were switched from the left and right sides on the Hero 3 to camera right and top on the Hero 3 Plus. I do realize that the 3 housing might not be best suited for this scenario, but maybe the relocation from one side to the top is how you reduce noise at higher speeds. I'm not 100% certain on what the relocation of these holes means, so let me know your thoughts and test results in the comments below. I do know, however, that the GoPro side as of right now is inaccurate. If you look at their model of the 3 Plus, it shows the grooves on the side of the lens as well as the mic holes on the left and right sides. It looks like they took a Hero 3 rendering, changed the button, and slapped a 3 Plus on the model. If you're looking to drop some serious cash on the Hero 3 Black Edition, make sure you don't skimp and buy a cheap card. I've had really good results with the SanDisk Extreme and the Extreme Pros, which are capable of riding up at the fast speeds that the Hero 3 Black Edition is capable of. So my final thoughts on the Hero 3 Plus versus the Hero 3. If you are filming, you know, maybe for YouTube or cinema or whatever, you need a cool POV cam or something like that, Hero 3 Plus is definitely the way to go. You get a sharper image, it's a little bit more crisp. Honestly, I feel like it's as if you were to take and drop it into After Effects and sharpen the image plus one, uh, maybe plus two. It's a very incremental change, but if, if it makes all the difference in the world to you to have a, a, a better image, then by all means go get it. I feel like the the Hero 3 Plus is a little bit better as far as the colors, but if you're shooting in Pro Tune mode and you're worried about that kind of stuff anyways, you're going to be doing color correction in post. So it's not that big of a deal when it comes to filming in 1080 and 720. If you're skydiving or something like that, you might just be better off getting a silver edition. I don't think uh, the average user is going to be able to tell that big of a difference between the 3 or the 3 Plus. Is the GoPro Hero 3 Plus worth your money versus getting the Hero 3? It's completely up to you. You can take a look at the sample footage. I'm gonna take and annotate all the original clips here so you can take and check that stuff out. Uh, will I keep the Hero 3s that I currently have? Yeah, I won't rush out and buy a bunch of Hero 3 Plus models because it's not that significant of a difference, uh, but I will also use that Hero 3 Plus for certain cinematic things that I might wanna make sure uh, has a really cool uh, look to it. If you check out the Breaking Bad video that I did, the GoPro footage stitches in really nice with the red footage. So keep that in mind whenever you're considering whether or not you're going to purchase the $330 Hero 3 model or if you're going to purchase the $400 Hero 3 Plus model in the future.